Hey, what's up? This one is paper 32 of May, June 2011 of A-Level Math, paper 3. Now, with that being said, obviously, let's move on to the questions we have for you. So here we have question number one. We have to solve this inequality. So find the values of x for which this is true. Now, again, by observation, we have x on both sides. So in that case, we just square both sides. You will have x squared less than 5 plus 2x squared. Next band, you will have what? You will have 25 plus 2 times this times this will be what? 2 times 5 is 10 times 2 will be 20. And plus 4x squared. Now simplify, let's send everything to, uh, to one side. For example, you will have what? This minus this will become minus 3x squared minus 20 and minus 25. But again, I don't like to work with negative values. Let me change that. How? I can send everything to the other side. You will have 3x squared plus 20 plus 25. And the sign will change to the other way. So finally, we can find the critical values of this equation. How? We just have to take the same equation, equate that to, to 0. Again, in this case, you do realize that uh, when we change a sign, we did not include equal to because, again, we don't have equal to here. There's no need for that. Now we can factorize. That will be 3x times x. 25 is 5 times 5. To get plus 20x, that will be plus 15 plus 5. So we confirm, well, x have to be the value of minus 5 over 3. x have to be minus 5. So now we have to use the critical values to find the set of values of x for which this is true. This is 0 right here. This is the value of minus 5. Value of minus 5 over 3. Since this one is a positive value, you will have a shape like this. Right. Now we want the value to be more than 0. So above 0, it will be on this side and on this side. So x have to be less than minus 5, and x have to be more than minus 5 over 3. Now obviously you can always double check your values, take one value from here, or you can take value of minus 2 and check, and take one value from here, you can always check, for example, um, sorry, one value from behind, because we are checking the limits, you can check a value here is, let's choose, what, minus, uh, minus 5 over 3 is actually less than minus 2, so yeah, you can take minus 2 and check, and here we can take the value of what? Of more than this, you can take minus 3 and check, if that makes sense or not. But again, the two values we have, the idea is, well, for your level math, I would always recommend, once you find your set of values of x, just check if that is, that is okay or not. But it seems to be fine to me, so in the end, x will have to be this one, and x have to be more than this. And this is your answer for question number 1. Now let's move on to question number two. Here we have to show, show the equation that this one minus this can be written in a quadratic equation in x. Okay, let's see what can be done. So we have log base of 2, x plus 5 equal to 5 minus log base of 2. So first thing first, let's send all the logs to one side. So you will have log base of 2, x plus 5, send this over here, become plus log base of 2x equal to 5. Now, because here the logs are the same, right? This and this are the same, we can combine them together. You will have log base of 2, x plus 5. Here we have plus, you become multiplied by this one, which is x. Now, to cancel out, to remove the log on this side, I have to send the base over here. So you will have x times, this one will be x squared, plus 5x equal to 2 power 5, which is what? We can check, it should be 32. So indeed, that will be 32. So let's write the equation properly. On one side, you will have this one minus 32 equal to 0. This is shown as required. We have shown this can be become a quadratic equation in x. This is your equation in x. Here you go. Now for part 2, hence solve the equation. So hence find the values of x for which that works. So here we go, let's try to factorize. 
x is x times x. 32 is what it is. Uh, 4 times what? 4 times 8, I believe. Let's check. Oh, yep, that works. It is 2 times 16. And what else do we know? 32 divided by 3 doesn't work. 32 divided by 5, 6. Nope. So it seems in the case we cannot use factorization, or oh, unless I'm not I'm missing something, we can always use our formula, right? So x have to be the value of minus b plus minus root of b square minus 4ac. So again, for any quadratic equation, if you don't want to waste time factorizing, you can always go back to using your formula to find the values directly. That will be 1, 5, 3, divided by 2a, which is 2. So x can be the value of what? So minus 5 plus root of 153 divided by 2. That will be 3.68, correct to 3SF. Or it could be the value of minus 5 minus root of 1.153 divided by 2. Minus 8.68. But again, here we have to reject this one. Why? Because log of x, it cannot take a negative value. That's why we will not have this one. So the only possible value will be x equals to 3 point this one. This is your question number two. Now let's move on to question number three. So here we have to solve the equation cos of theta for cos of 2 theta equal to 3. Now something happens here is that we observe here we have theta and 2 theta. So obviously we have to expand this one, right? So here we have cos of 2 theta is equal to what? Again, here we have cos of theta, so let's work in terms of cos. We will not change that into sine, let's make something happen. It is equal to 2 cos squared theta minus 1. We will choose this one because why? It is in terms of cos, let's choose something in cos. You will have cos theta plus 4 times this, that will be 8 cos squared theta minus 4 is equal to 3. Now we can send everything to one side. Now, again, why did I say that? Because I know cos 2 theta is also equal to 1 minus 2 sine square theta, or is also equal to cos square theta minus sine square theta. Now, I could have chosen this, this, or this. Same thing, but eventually, I do understand here we have cos. Let me choose this one directly, so my life will be easier. Let me choose that one. That's the idea behind. So now everything to one side, you will have 8 cos square plus cos theta minus 7 is 0. Now as you can see we have a simple quadratic equation. Factorize. We have 8 cos theta times cos theta. 7 is 7 times 1. To get plus 1 we have to have plus 8, right? Plus 8 minus 7. So here we have cos theta have to be the value of 7 over 8 and cos theta have to be the value of minus 1. Now let's see what can we do. Here we have our positive value, have to be in the first quadrant and in this quadrant. Obviously there's no need to find this one, why? Because you can see theta is only between this and this, only in the first and second. So there's no need to find this one. We can find theta directly is equal to cos inverse of 7 over 8. 7 over 8, we have to use degrees here, that will be 28.955, which is 29.0 degrees. Now the other value is, the other value is 360 minus 29, which is too much anyways, as you can see, it will not be in this domain. There's, it is kind of useless in this case. Now here it is minus 1, cost negative will be ASCC, it will be right here, or right here. So we don't need to use that one, it will be too much, so we only have this one to find. This one is what? This one is usually, we take 180 minus alpha. Now again, why do I use alpha? Because here we have a negative value. I have to first find alpha and then find theta. Again, when it's negative, we don't do it directly. We find this fake angle first and then we find the value of theta eventually. So alpha will be cos inverse of the positive value of this one, which will be zero. Let's check. It is zero. So we confirm theta have to be the value of 180 minus 0, which is just 180. And this one is included in this domain, so finally we can say, well, 
In that case, we have two values, which is 29.0 and 180 as your answer for the two values of theta for that equation. And this is your question number three. Now let's move on to question number four. The diagram shows a semicircle ACB, so ACB with center O right here, and radius is R. So OC is R, which means OB is also R, and OA is also R, because they are the radius of the same semicircle. Now the tangent at C, tangent, again, if it is a tangent, if it touches your center, this have to be 90, so we have to know this. We have learned this from O level, so we have to know this by now. Produces, uh, AB produces at T, so we have this one right here. Now the angle BOC is X, which means this will be pi minus X. Now the area of the region is equal to the area of the semicircle. Okay, so what is the area of a semicircle? So pretty easy. Area of circle is pi r square. Semi will be divided by 2. Now how would you find this area of this region? So by observation, that will be what? Area of this triangle minus area of this sector. That will be pretty easy. Half r square theta will be the area of this. So let's find the area of the triangle now. Area of triangle is what? It is half times base times height. So the base has been seen to be R. So we have to find height right now. So by observation, this is my hypotenuse. This is what? And this is what? So let's find out one by one. So what, what information do we have over here? It tells you the tangent at C meets at AB, so at C it meets at AB, uh, produced at T, so it meets right here, true, it meets right here, this is my point T, it meets this point, good. Now we have a few values we can use here, which is this value of X, which is the angle of this right angle triangle, so let me write this down. So right now we have this triangle, this is 90, and this is X, this is all right here. Now. I want to find this one because this is the height of my triangle, perpendicular height. So by using the trigonometry, so I can find this. This is what side? So let's use that. Okay. So here I will have, this is my A side. This is the, the value of the opposite side. I have to use 10. So 10 of the angle is equal to opposite side over A side. So H have to be R tan X. Okay, so now we have the value replaced back in your main equation. That will be half times R. H will be R tan X. All right, cool. Let's replace back. The area of this region will be the whole thing, which is this one, minus this one, which is whole thing will be half r squared times x minus this one which is half r squared this one is equal to semicircle half r squared over 2. Now we can simplify, we can first cancel out the half below for everyone and cancel out the this one for everyone. So you will have tan x minus, again the angle here is x not theta so let's replace that will be x equal to pi. So finally, I can just send x to the other side, you will have x plus this one, shown as required. This is your answer for part one. Okay, now for part two, using this formula we have right here, which is this one, x n plus one is equal to tan inverse of x n plus pi. We have to find value of x, correct to two decimal place, give the result of each iteration to four decimal place. Now in this case, uh, what value can we use for x1? Well, you can choose anything, x1, x have to be between the value of 0 to 180. So let me choose x1 to be pi by 2, which is 1.57. Let me choose this value as x1, just the midpoint of around 90, 90, value, 90 uh, degrees, which is around that value. 
The X2 will be what? X3, X4, X5, X6. So let me use that as radians here. Here we have 1.57 as my first value. 10 inverse of answer plus pi. Now give me 1.3. 617, 1.3523, 1.3518, 1.3518, and finally, as you can see, converges to the value of 1.3518, right? So therefore, correct to two decimal place will be 1.35 radians. And this is your answer for question number four. I hope the first half of the video was somewhat helpful. If you guys would love to access the full video, feel free to click on the Patreon link on the main page. Otherwise, you can go to the description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.